the Finisterre Aquarium in La Coruña in northwestern Spain. Antonio Cribero is the aquarium's head biologist. He's been studying the behavior and intelligence of the octopus for the last 10 years. But what most people don't know is that while we've been studying the octopus, the octopus has been studying us. This dimension of octopus behavior doesn't really surprise Antonio. In fact, those who work with octopuses in aquariums have their work cut out for them, just keeping them in their tanks. Turn your back and an octopus can crawl out of one tank and slip into another to get its prey and then quietly return home. So just who is this curious creature who leaves the comfort of its watery world and seems as interested in us as we are in it? Antonio knows this isn't an animal who simply made a break for freedom. This is an intelligent creature who's mapping its environment. But just how intelligent is the octopus? Antonio is going to make little Pepino undergo a slew of tests. This time, there will be no escape. Most animals learn the skills they need from their parents to find food and to hide from their enemies. Much of the rest is instinctual. The sign of true intelligence is when an animal solves a new kind of problem, something that no member of the species may have figured out before. For the octopus, removing a cork from a bottle to catch a crab is child's play. It's almost exactly like lifting a rock to find a delicious morsel underneath. It does it by instinct. But what about opening a screw-top jar? There are no screw-top jars in nature, nor any instinctual response to help in opening it. Look, he's exploring the jar. He's touching it. The little octopus's inquisitive arms are almost as sensitive and agile as human hands as they explore the novelty of the screw-top jar. Here it seems the octopus is not using instinct, but cognitive reasoning to solve this problem thinking, if the crab got in there, there must be a way to get it out. Pepino thinks through the problem until he succeeds. The hardest part is to believe that this animal is simply a mollusk. As far as his family tree goes, this young octopus is more closely related to an oyster or a snail than to any other species of animal. As a reward for all his hard work, Pepino injects poison to paralyze the crab, and then it's lunchtime. I've been fishing for octopus in the Atlantic off the northern coast of Spain for 20 years, and I think that the octopus is a very intelligent animal. I've seen some strange things in my 20 years on the job. One time, I set three basket traps. I put two sardines in each one as bait and dropped them into the water. Later, when I hauled in the traps, I was amazed to find one trap containing an octopus and six sardines. The thing took two sardines out of one trap, tucked them under an arm, then took two from the second trap, tucked them under, and swam over to the third trap where it climbed in and settled down for a feast. When we catch an octopus in a trap, it's either because it fell asleep or because it's confused. 
I mean, an octopus can go in and out of a trap no problem. It's smart enough to get the sardines out and then take them home whenever it wants. Lobster traps may fool lobsters, but they're just food storage for an octopus. Where's the trap when you can get in, have lunch, and leave without paying the check? Back at the aquarium, Antonio Cribero and his team make their crab-eating experiment even harder. We'll put some crabs inside the flask. We'll force them in. But because of their size, it will be impossible for them to come out through the opening. The octopus can reach them, but won't be able to get them out. Even chimpanzees were unable to solve this problem. We now want to see how the octopus will deal with the problem. These crabs were forced into the flask, a situation that simply wouldn't happen in the octopus's natural habitat. The octopus has to think. He smells his prey and can see that there's no stopper keeping him away from the crab. But even with an open top, these crabs are definitely not going to come out. This means the problem has to be attacked from another angle. If the crabs are too big to get out, the octopus will just have to make himself small enough to get in. Although he's closed up inside, Pepino doesn't seem agitated. Having solved the problem of getting into the flask, he knows he won't have any trouble getting out. The octopus has passed an important intelligence test, the solving of new problems with flying colors. In all of these tests, we've used our star octopus, Pepino. But we then repeated the experiment with other octopuses so we could prove that we were not merely observing one highly skilled individual specimen. What we did was take this group of animals and put them through the same tests, and they were all as good as Pepino at solving the problem. This clearly indicates that we're not dealing with the individual skill of a single specimen, but with a skill inherent to the species, to octopus vulgaris. <laughs> <laughs> 